How to Evict Your Current Tenants with a Section 8 Notice If you want to evict a tenant under English law, there has to be a clear and legal reason for the eviction. Under Schedule 2 of the Housing Act 1988, which is used in England and Wales, you can evict a tenant on 17 different grounds using a Section 8 notice. If one or more of these grounds are accepted by the court, Section 8 enables you to end a short hold tenancy agreement or a rental agreement between a landlord and tenant during the fixed period of the agreement, after giving a required notice period ranging from two weeks to two months. Part 1 Gathering Information 1. Verify your tenant has violated the tenancy agreement. A Section 8 notice can be used to evict a tenant at any time an occupancy agreement is in effect, but you must be able to prove to the court how the agreement has been violated. Depending on the details of the situation, you may want to collect any receipts for payments made. Keep copies of requests for payments not made. Take photographs and record descriptions of any damages to the property. Get records of any statements regarding complaints against the tenant. Keep copies of all communication between the landlord and the tenant. 2. Determine if the tenant has violated the tenancy agreement on a mandatory ground. There are 17 possible grounds for considering eviction using a Section 8 notice. The first eight of these grounds are mandatory, meaning that if you can prove the violation, the court must grant the possession order. If your tenant has violated the tenancy agreement on multiple grounds, you should include all of them. Ground 1 states that the property is needed as the landlord's or the landlord's spouse's or civil partner's principal home. This ground also requires that you gave the tenant written notice before the tenancy began that repossession for this purpose might be required. Ground 2 states that a property is subject to a mortgage that came into effect before the current tenant began occupying the property, and the mortgagees are repossessing the property. Ground 3 is used in cases in which a dwelling was available as a holiday home within 12 months before the beginning of the tenancy, and the tenancy term is no longer than 8 months, and the tenant was given written notice before the tenancy began that repossession for this purpose might be required. Ground 4 is used in cases in which a property belongs to an educational institution, and the tenancy term is no longer than 12 months and the tenant was given written notice before the tenancy began that repossession for this purpose might be required. Ground 5 is used in cases in which the dwelling is needed by a minister for the purposes of his or her office, and the tenant was given written notice before the tenancy began that repossession for this purpose might be required. Ground 6 is used in cases in which the dwelling is needed for a social landlord or charitable trust, and major reconstruction or demolition work is needed, making it impractical or impossible for the tenant to continue occupying the property, and the landlord in possession of the property acquired it before the tenancy began. Ground 7 is used when a tenant assumes occupancy after the death of the previous tenant, but the tenant does not have the right to do so. The notice must be given within 12 months of the previous tenant's death or within 12 months of the landlord becoming aware of that tenant's death. Ground 8 is non-payment of rent. It is actionable if rent is paid, 1, fortnightly and at least 8 weeks rent is owed, or 2, monthly and at least 2 months rent is owed, or 3, quarterly and 1 quarters or more rent is at least 3 months overdue, or 4, yearly and at least 3 months rent is at least 3 months overdue. 3. Determine if the tenant has violated the tenancy agreement on a discretionary ground. Grounds 9, 17 of Section 8 are discretionary, meaning that the court will consider whether or not to grant the possession order. Remember that if your tenant has violated the tenancy agreement on multiple grounds, you should include all of them, as this can make your case more convincing. Ground 9 states that the tenant will be provided with a suitable alternative property and that the landlord will be responsible for reasonable moving costs. 
Ground 10 states that rent is owed to the landlord at the time the possession proceedings begin and was owed when the notice was served. Ground 11 states that your tenant has repeatedly failed to pay rent on time, whether or not any is due at the time the notice is served. Ground 12 states that the tenant has violated any other terms of the tenancy agreement. Such terms might include prohibitions on how the property can be used. Ground 13 is used in cases where the tenant or someone occupying the space with the tenant's implicit or explicit permission has damaged the property. Ground 14 considers eviction in cases where the tenant is engaged in activities that are a nuisance to neighbors or has been convicted of using the property for illegal and or immoral purposes. Ground 15 is used in cases where the tenant or someone occupying the space with the tenant's implicit or explicit permission has damaged furniture that is part of the property. Ground 16 is used in cases in which the tenant was an employee of the landlord but not no longer works for the landlord. Ground 17 is used in cases where it is discovered that the tenant gave false information to the landlord in order to gain occupancy. 4. Determine the length of notice you will give your tenant. The amount of time a tenant has to vacate the premises after receiving a Section 8 notice varies based on the specific violations of the lease agreement, but ranges between two weeks and two months. For grounds 1, 2, 5, 6, 7, 9, and 16, you must give at least two months' notice. For grounds 3, 4, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, 15, and 17, you must give at least two weeks' notice. A Section 8 notice does not itself order eviction, but simply lets your tenant know that you intend to apply for a possession order at the end of the required notice period. Your tenant may decide to vacate the property during the notice period stated by the lease. If the tenant does not, you can then apply for a possession order. 5. Contact a solicitor. Section 8 laws are complex, and a successful Section 8 notice requires you to be precise. If you need or want legal advice on starting the eviction, discuss the case with a solicitor. He or she can help you complete the Section 8 notice and determine the grounds that apply in your case. Part 2 Serving a Section 8 Notice 1. Complete the Section 8 Notice Form There is a set form for a Section 8 notice, which must contain specific information. You must complete this form exactly as instructed, otherwise, the court may reject the document and request. The form is available online from court websites at 2. Issue the Section 8 Notice to the Tenant Typically, it is best to give notice to the tenant by first-class post and also by personal delivery. It is helpful to record the delivery or have a witness to the delivery who can testify that the tenant received the notice personally. 3. Allow your tenant to correct the violation, if possible. In some cases, your tenant may be able to take action to rectify the violation. For instance, if you give your tenant a Section 8 notice based on Ground 10, and your tenant pays the rent owed within the required notice period, at least two weeks, then the Section 8 notice will no longer apply and your tenant will not be evicted. If your tenant is facing eviction on multiple grounds, it may be more difficult to correct the violations. 4. Apply for a court possession order if necessary. If your tenant has not vacated the premises by the required date, you can apply for a court order to force the eviction. A standard possession order can be filed if your tenant does not leave by the required date and you are also claiming unpaid rent, or an accelerated possession order can be filed if you are not claiming unpaid rent. Possession claims can be filed online via HM Courts and Tribunal Services Possession Claims online website or a paper copy, can be submitted to county court. Currently, court possession order fees are £250 if submitted online and £280 for a paper copy.
If your tenant still will not leave after receiving a court possession order, you can file a warrant for possession, and bailiffs will remove the tenant from your property. It is a criminal offense under the Protection from Eviction Act 1997 for you or any landlord to try to physically evict a tenant. This includes changing the locks on the property so that the tenant cannot enter it.